Hey folks, it's Mark. I'm back. I've been on a little bit of a hiatus from doing the Lick of the Week and my guitar blog and whatnot. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, teaching via Skype. We do Skype classes and private lessons uh, and then all the stuff that we do here at Premier Music, which is the, the actual music school that I own here in Orange, California. Um, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of the time I've been teaching adults uh, who have played guitar and tried to be self-taught through uh, either instructional materials they found on YouTube or other sites on the uh, internet, my website, um, books, DVDs, whatever. Yeah, and a lot of it comes down to people feel like they're unable to make headway using this giant glut of material out there. And I even tell the students that I have that it's not so much that I teach anything that you're not going to get anywhere else as much as uh, I actually provide a little bit of a structure in my lessons. That's what any good guitar teacher does, or any good teacher, period. Um, everything about music theory, technique, there's there's so much stuff out there. It's like drinking from a fire hose, you know, and, you know, what you're paying a teacher for usually is the ability to, to take you through all of this material in a way that makes sense to you, how they package it, um, how they take you from one thing to the next, and how they get you to actually internalize the information so it's useful to you, blah, 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 you know. Um, but the one thing that I, I really started... Um, spending a lot of time on with, with a lot of my students is the idea that guitar players tend to learn the instrument completely differently than most other uh, m most other instruments. You know, if you're taking <clears throat> piano or saxophone or anything like that, you learn, you know, you'd expect to learn, you know, out of a book. You learn how to read music. Um, you, you learn how to read pieces of music uh, with rhythms, you know, understanding your pitches. Um, it's expected that you work on technique, usually scales. Um, you learn your major scales in different keys, minor scales. They have you go through the stuff in sequences uh, to you know basically make sure that you can get through these scale passages in ways that when you're actually playing music it makes sense. Um, you know, typically you play with a metronome uh, and that forces you to internalize the consistency of time. Uh, you know, and when you're actually making music, um, you know, especially if you're improvising or soloing, a lot of what happens is that you know a saxophone player or a horn player you know, or a piano player, you know, they're playing melodies based off of their understanding of scales and chord tones and the music that they've learned. With most of us adult guitar players, and this is really about people roughly my age or from their 20s, early 20s, up into retirement age, all of like our generation of, of musicians, um, you know, the guitar, especially for rock musicians, is, is taught in a way where, you know, the first scale we learn is a minor pentatonic scale. You know, and somebody by rote shows us, or we get out of a magazine by rote, we memorize a couple Jimmy Page licks, or, you know, whatever it is, whatever your favorite musician is. Um, but all we're doing is we're getting numbers off a piece of paper, finding where it is on the guitar, and going through a sequence of actions. You know, we're not learning about pitches. We're not learning about theory. Uh, we're not learning about dynamics. Um, you know, there's just all of these things that are not happening for us uh, in the developmental part of, of our musical lives. So as musicians, a lot of times we don't grow very far. You know, and, and a lot of the adult students that I get, because I don't teach very many kids via Skype, they're all kind of in the same boat, you know, and uh, I've kind of started going backwards with a lot of folks, you know. Uh, somebody can sit down, they can play all the solos to Stairway to Heaven or something like that, and no, well, that's great, but what does it mean? Can you use it? You know, do you actually hear in your head the melody that your fingers are playing? Can you take something in one key and move it into another key and, and repurpose or utilize it somewhere else or uh, generate your own melody? Do you um, know your notes on the fretboard well enough um, that you can take, uh, you know, if someone says we're playing a C chord, it's not just a shape where you put your fingers, but you know that there's a C, E, and a G that make up that sound and where can you, else can you play those notes to make your own chord voicings? There's all of these, these elements. And that's just scratching the surface. Um, you know, and for me lately, you know, it's kind of been about 
resetting the clock for a lot of my students, and also for myself. I've kind of been going back with my own playing, um, even going back through uh, old instructional books from the 50s and 60s instructional books by like George Van Epps and uh, Barney Kessel and you know and it's it's kind of neat to see how those those people taught because they really learned the instrument and taught the instrument a lot like the horn players did of those eras you know but um, guitar and rock guitar especially kind of took its own course you know reading music it's challenging um, a lot of the technical elements of playing guitar not very simple you know, but, uh, you know, sometimes you get like the 80s era where you have shredder players where they just focus only on the technique to the exclusion of all else. Um, you have the grunge era where they focus on uh, uh, on songs to the exclusion of all else. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of that kind of thing and not a very complete picture for a lot of musicians in the last, I don't know, 30, 40 years worth of of rock or, or pop or commercial guitar, you know, unless you see someone who went to a music school or a musical trade school like Musicians Institute or, or something like that, um, someone who had an organized musical education. But the rest of us, you know, being self-taught or taking music lessons from someone who's grown up in this tradition, you know, we, uh, we learn differently than the rest of the world, you know, and it, it makes it that much harder to interface or play with other musicians or even just to grow. You know, we haven't learned enough about music to learn music. Um, and that's kind of, I think, what we're going to be looking at with my podcasts in the, in the coming months. I may not do a weekly Lick of the Week, um, but I'm definitely going to be doing this on a fairly regular basis again. And we're going to kind of take a look at uh, how we can become musicians who happen to make music with a guitar instead of just guitar players who kind of regurgitate these finger sequences and things like that. We're going to get back to making music. So that's kind of the idea this week is, is just kind of a rededication of my podcast here. Um, you know, I'll still probably do the occasional look of the week or do something fun. Um, I can't generally do a, a podcast every week right now. I just, the, especially with the Skype classes, I've, I've gotten incredibly busy, um, but I really enjoy doing this. We also, we're still doing gear giveaways. Uh, we're doing a cord pedal tuner. We've done uh, microphones and all kinds of stuff. So um, you know, just check out the website, which there should be probably about here. There's going to be like the, the address to go to if you're not seeing it on my site um, and kind of get back in on the action.